Okay, you guys, so it is Tuesday, May 28th. Here's my badge, but check this out. This is really cool. So I'm, I've been added to the media list this year, so on the flip side, we've got media on there. So that's going to be exciting. I'll definitely be getting some content, uh, interviews, and so forth. But let me just go over some of the things uh, that I, I got here late. I had a little late flight, so I missed out on a couple of the earlier talks. But essentially, the one that I caught was sedentary lifestyle and breaking that up with activity, uh, particularly the energy cost of stand. Is it much different than sitting uh, in terms of energy costs? So um, there's less muscle activity, and it has to do with more uh, bone bearing and, and postural sway. So uh, standing is a step in the right direction, but the take home message is moving. So standing, but also you know, light, light activity like walking, you know, and so forth. And I, I certainly agree with that. So, uh, but I thought that was fascinating. Now, it was mentioned that this data was uh, cross-sectional uh, in the sense that they found that um, standing was associated with a higher body mass index, but it was cross-sectional data. But it also bears the I, the, the notion uh, or the fact that I just mentioned how standing doesn't burn as many calories. Uh, much more than sitting does. It, it burns a little more, but not as much. And we need to, perhaps, what's more important is movement rather than just, because standing isn't movement. I mean, it's stationary. Uh, it's primarily static, isometric. Um, and then also that uh, some studies or, or some evidence is showing, is suggesting that uh, workplace standing, like occupations where you stand a lot, is, there's been associations with venous insufficiency. Uh, which is basically when you stand, your muscles are not contracting, so hence you're going to have blood pulling in your in your in your lower limbs and so forth. Um, so that kind of you know confirms that that um, that association or finding and back problems. That's been you know I'm sure you guys have heard people that you know or you've heard of or talk about back problems, particularly standing long periods of time. Also footwear, what we wear. Uh, can affect that. So the take-home message was um, don't have long periods of sedentary time, uh, such as sitting. Break it up, right? So um, I guess it goes with the saying of all things in moderation, too. You know, like if you're sitting for too long, uh, you want to stand up. And, and a lot of modern occupations are, 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 you know, we spend a lot of time sitting. So that's why it's important to, to have this kind of modern interventional approach of breaking up those those long sitting times with physical activity such as standing and moving not just standing but moving a little running an errand doing a task so forth um, and then the next presenter was uh, interesting uh, information on leaky adipocytes and how that's a sign of inflammation uh, from overloading of too much fat so essentially when that adipocyte is being overloaded with too much fat via overeating excess you know, calorie intake, sedentary, put all those things together and, and you have those issues. And, and macrophages can also accumulate to the area in those situations um, with, with the uh, inflammatory adipocytes. So he's talking about the lean and obese phenotype and adipocytes, which I've touched on previously in videos, brown versus white adipose tissue and so forth. So here's a very fascinating paper on sedentary behavior in cardiac patients. It was done by Eshme, right? Yeah, hi. Eshme, I'm hi. Yvonne, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. So in my study, we looked uh, at two different research questions. First, we wanted to uh, examine which patients, the cardiac patients, are uh, at high risk for high sedentary time. In the second questionnaire, we wanted to look whether their uh, sedentary behavior changed after cardiac rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. So in our first study we uh, collected questionnaires for about 600 cardiac patients and we found that uh, material status, employment status, uh, living environment, being resuscitated, uh, but also cardiac anxiety were associated with high levels of sedentary time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next step was um, we looked whether uh, cardiac re uh, sedentary time changed after cardiac rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. And we did that in 84 cardiac patients and we gave them an active poll and we measured their, uh, them at three different time points. So the first one was right before cardiac rehabilitation, 
second one was right after, and the third one was two or three months after cardiac. time did not change before and after cardiac revitation. So here is there is one figure for the weekend days and this one is for the sorry weekdays and this one is for the weekend days. And in bo both days you see that their sedentary behavior did not change. Well how long was the cardiac rehabilitation like um how many days a week and how long were the... Uh... So it was a little bit dependent on, dependent on the patient right. because more, some patients need more uh, support than others. Yes. But in general, it was six, six weeks and they had to come in twice a week for one and a half hour. Okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, if I go back to the research question, so we did not find anything in sedentary time, but we did see something in a prolonged sit and sedentary bouts, which are bouts longer than 30 uh, minutes of sitting time. So uh, first, uh, we saw nothing during the weekdays, but we saw some decrease during the weekend days after cardiac rehabilitation. So that's very interesting. So. Um, we see that they changed a little bit. Maybe we want more improvement. So uh, we are now looking for an intervention study to reduce sedentary time after cardiac rehabilitation. But uh, yeah, this is already a nice uh, start to begin with. Yes, it w yes, it is. Um, and so the bottom figure right there, that's. Frequency. So oh, then, I see. for example, the median was around five. So it had five times per day a prolonged sitting bout. So 150 minutes total. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the and other sedentary time was more into uh, short sedentary. Thank you very much. So in this case, uh, sedentary behavior is obviously um, unfavorable overall, and cardiac patients are not becoming active even with cardiac rehabilitation, at yeah. least in this context. Yes. So yeah. we need to find a way to increase their activity level. Yes. Yeah, and one way could be to reduce their sanitary time and replace it with, for example, light intensive physical activities or maybe with higher intensity. But you did mention that at least many of the patients were uh, obese or overweight? Yes. Well, yeah, most of them. Most of them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we talked about that being associated with sedentary time. Yeah. And that, yeah, that yeah. might be. Yeah. 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 In other studies, you see already some association between uh, uh, your BMI and your sedentary time. But uh, yeah, I should do also look at that in the study. No, this yeah. is great. This yeah. is a great study. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Here's a fascinating study about seeing is believing and tracking to stay on track. So track to stay on track. So essentially what we have here is um, in a hypertensive population, you had one group that exercised and you had another group that exercised but also took their blood pressure. Also uh, post-exercise hypotension or the known benefit of uh, exercise and reducing blood pressure up to 24 hours right here. The immediate reductions that persists for greater than or equal to 24 hours. And what they found was that when people who had higher blood pressure checked their blood pressure after exercise and saw those results, right, you seeing is believing, they were excess, they exercised more, they increased it in adherence. So, you know, results speak volumes, not just by appearance, but also by what you can't see. You can't see blood pressure unless you check it. And this goes with other, I would imagine if there was a study done on diabetics and blood sugar and they saw a reduction in blood sugar, that they would probably also increase their adherence because they're seeing the results that they want, right? And no one wants to have, uh, you know, these health problems continue, right? We always want to make them better or manage them better. Nitric oxide is naturally made in our bodies. 
A Nobel Prize was awarded for the discovery that nitric oxide plays a significant role in the cardiovascular system. This discovery revealed nitric oxide as a vasodilator, helping to reduce blood pressure and increase oxygen in the blood. Produced by the lining of the blood vessels, known as the endothelium, nitric oxide acts as a messenger molecule, telling blood vessels to widen or dilate and contract or relax, like an elastic band. With enough nitric oxide, blood vessels can relax and widen, allowing blood to flow from and to the heart. As we age, we produce less nitric oxide. This can cause the cardiovascular system to become less elastic, which can reduce the flow of oxygenated blood to vital organs. This is the reason it's important to have an active lifestyle and a diet that's rich in nitrates, which bioconvert to nitric oxide and may help maintain normal blood pressure levels and a healthy cardiovascular system.